Wells Fargo. Our support of Aggie students goes beyond just banking. By supporting News 22, we're giving back to the community. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Tonight on News 22, Diana Castillo brings you some steps to take if you're caught in an active shooter situation. Shelby Cap brings you the sights and sounds of this year's Sunland Park Derby. And Jackie Loreta got an inside look at some self-defense tactics. All that and more on News 22 Thursday. Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Victoria Valerrama. And I'm Shelby Cap. Two people are in the Doniana County Jail tonight charged with a double murder. That's, the, that's after two people were found shot to death in the community of Garfield. Luis Flores and Cristal Cardenas were arrested in Las Cruces yesterday afternoon. Sheriff deputies and a hash police officer responded to a call on Sunday morning and found the bodies of Vanessa Rodriguez Mora and Mario Carval. The suspects are being held without bond at the Doña Ana County Jail. They're charged with murder and other related charges. Because of the high number of school shootings this year alone, the NMSU community decided to better prepare for dangerous situations. Deanna Castillo shows us how the NMSU Police Department is exploring some new life-saving tactics. Why these children are practicing to duck and cover, just as you do in your school. Duck, hide, and cover. For decades, this is what we've been told to do during emergency situations. But in shootings like the recent one in Las Vegas, a lot of people escape the bullets, doing the opposite. Recently, the NMSU Police Department held a workshop on how to respond to major emergencies. Uh, it's not about making people safer here at New Mexico State University as much as it is providing them with skills that will serve them for the rest of their lives. No matter where they might be, in an airport, a restaurant, a movie theater, these skills go way beyond just the NMSU boundaries. The workshop details what to do in not only school shootings, but also in emergencies such as earthquakes, hurricanes, and bomb threats. You know, I thought it was a really good presentation, a lot of good information that we needed, um, especially with events going on now, you know, throughout the country, so it, it's something to keep everyone informed. Instead of duck and cover, police say the best thing to do is run, hide, or fight. In an active shooter situation, ordinary items like these can double up as weapons. These actions follow the KISSES principle, an acronym that means keep it simple under stress. This approach highlights the importance of not panicking during an emergency, but instead taking action to stay safe. Elvira Mason says it gave her peace of mind. If we don't have a plan, then we just are afraid. But if we have a plan, then we feel like we can do something, and I think that alleviates a lot of fear. Third step is strike. Jude Lopez says he hopes that these classes will improve a person's chances of survival. For News 22, Diana Castillo. Another group of doctors is calling for stricter gun control. Anesthesiologists at the University of New Mexico say their nationwide professional organization should promote the study of gun violence and the enacting of laws to reduce gun violence. Anesthesiologists say they see the results of gun violence every day and believe it should be treated like the health crisis it is. So we had a really nice day today and it's finally starting to feel like spring. I know I kept taking my jacket on and putting it back on, <laughs> like taking it off and putting it back on all day. And Andrea Vasquez is next with the first look at weather. Thanks Vicki. So we're going to be seeing some clear skies and we've been seeing a temperature of 72, winds coming from the northeast at 66 miles per hour, our humidity is at is at 13 percent, our dew point at 16 degrees, and it hasn't rained in about 17 days, so our barometer is going to stay at 29.9 inches. So for first weather today, uh, we saw a high of 74 degrees, an average of 67, a low of 44 degrees, and back in to, to, uh, 20, uh, 2015, we saw a record high of 85 degrees, and back in 1972, we saw a low of 25 degrees and there is no rain today so our uh, uh, participation levels are going to stay at 0.81 degrees. And that's all I have for right now so let's take it back to the desk. Dreamers and supporters of DACA that our students are not backing down. 
Students at Doniana Community College in Gadsden are taking a stand with residents living in the U.S. under the DREAM Act. Earlier today, the student body and staff members at DACC Gadsden campus showed supporters for those affected showed support for those affected by DAC, the DACA program. Guest speaker George Mendoza's artwork was displayed during the event. He had some words of encouragement. I can relate. I, I mean, I was born here, but I, I feel like we're all dreamers. Better opportunities. The students who plan the event plan to continue their efforts supporting people affected by the immigration issue. Dreamers and other people who want to come to NMSU may have to pay more. I, Even though enrollment is up this year, the past trend of falling student enrollment has caused the Board of Regents to consider raising tuition for certain degrees. Degrees that require more equipment and faculty, like nursing, engineering, creative media, and some master's degrees. The university is hoping to increase student enrollment with more online classes. The new budget will be finalized by April 6th by the Board of Regents. You may not know it, but today is A&M Day. It's a tribute of when NMSU was known as New Mexico A&M with a focus on military training. It was sponsored by NMSU Air Force ROTC program on Pride Field that many just call the horseshoe. There was an Air Force Huey helicopter in the middle of the field, demonstrations by military police dogs, and a climbing wall to test your physical fitness. Um, so, uh, I think that this is a great way to showcase what we do and uh, a nice way to get outside versus sitting behind a table and just passing out some brochures. Today marks the 20th. In addition to military recruiters, the NMSU Fire Department was there climbing their tall ladder and answering questions for anyone interested in joining emergency response services. Today marks the 20th anniversary of the initial release of the endangered Mexican gray wolf. Back in 1998, 11 wolves were released near the Arizona-New Mexico border. Since then, the population has fluctuated, only recently reaching a high of 114 wolves. The effort to return Mexican wolves to the American Southwest has had a troubled history. There have been lawsuits, poaching, and livestock deaths. The world's first atomic test left behind an impact in a small New Mexico town, and now they're sharing their story. Members of the Tula Rosa Basin downwinders are now looking for recognition of the harms caused by the 1945 Trinity test and are trying to gather stories from residents of Carasoso, New Mexico. Advocates say many who lived in the area weren't told about the dangers of the test and later were diagnosed with rare forms of cancer. They are now seeking compensation from the U.S. government. Radioactive waste from around the U.S. has been sent to the federal government's only underground nuclear waste repository. Shipments have become more frequent coming from Los Alamos National Laboratory. U.S. Energy Department officials who oversee operations at the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant in southern New Mexico spoke about the details of those shipments at a conference in Phoenix. Stay tuned and Andrea will be back with your national forecast. But first, Shelby takes us to this year's Sunland Park Derby. More on that when News 22 continues. At a recent KRWG coffee visit, we talked with KRWG fans about why they value public media. The fact that you're here in T or C says a lot to me, that you're interested in our community. KRWG is my major source of information and entertainment. Please support public radio. Uh, if not for yourself, do it for me. Become a member online at krwg.org or call 1-888-922. 5794. Thank you. Registering to vote in New Mexico is easy. Forms are available at Department of Motor Vehicles offices and your county clerk's office. And those with a driver's license or other state ID may register to vote online at sos.state.nm.us. You must be 18 years old at the time of the next election. Voting is a responsibility of citizenship. This message brought to you by KRWG. 
Welcome back. You're watching News 22 Thursday. Where news matters. People came to Sunland Park this past weekend from near and far to compete in the annual Sunland Park Derby. And what they saw could be considered a warm-up for the Kentucky Derby. Horse owners, trainers, and jockeys gathered at the Sunland Park racetrack and casino for their chance to win a spot in the winner's circle. A local family, the Eckleberries, were hoping for a dream come true with a horse owned and trained by the family. In fact, racing has been in the family business for a long time. My grandfather was a trainer. My dad, they both uh, passed away since now. And then I have a son, Rye, that's a jockey. So. And Rye knows just how big this race is. You always hope to, to, to get the derby. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be tough for that horse. I mean, it's uh, some of the best horses around. There is $1.5 million in purses being offered here today at the Sunland Park Derby. However, the biggest prize is the 50 crucial points that the winner will receive for entry into the Kentucky Derby. You win, it's uh, basically an automatic dearth into the Kentucky Derby, which is, you know, every rider's dream to be able to win that. Kevin trained fortified effort, who was at low odds to win, but that didn't matter to the family. You know, this is the Sunland Derby, so we're going to take a chance and see what happens. The dream didn't come true for the Eckleberries, but it did for another local horse. Runaway Ghost came in first, winning $400,000 and the 50 qualifying points, meaning he just might be the first local horse in 10 years to be heading to the Kentucky Derby. And for the Eckleberries, they will keep racing, hoping their time will come. If you love country music, you're in the right city. Country singer Thomas Sprett is heading to Las Cruces on Saturday, April 7th on his Life Changes Tour. The show is in the Pan Am Center and will begin at 7 p.m. Tickets are available at the Pan American Center ticket office and at all Ticketmaster outlets. Many of us have been there. It's New Year's Eve, St. Patrick's Day, or even March Madness. You're celebrating with friends and you have a little too much to drink. The morning after doesn't usually leave you feeling your best. Well now, there are unconventional services for those moments that could end up bringing the solution right to your doorstep. Zach Cover explains in today's Health Minute. In an era where nearly everything seems to be on demand, why not a treatment for your hangover? Doctors say that most people can get relief with time and by simply drinking fluids like water or soup. But then are services like the IV doc. For a couple hundred dollars, they bring a type of intravenous hydration, vitamins, and more into a person's home. The treatment itself has been around for years. The availability of in-home, on-demand services, though, is relatively new. A number of companies offer some variation of its treatment, but it's not for everyone. Research shows there are medical risks associated with any intravenous infusions, and this industry is largely unregulated. Dr. Diva Nagula provides care through the service and says every patient goes through a screening process before a nurse shows up at the door. A physician like myself will call the patient and will ensure to see if the patient is an appropriate candidate for us. Some doctors caution, the primary benefit may be purely psychological, okay? yeah. but for many, okay. it's a matter of convenience. For today's Health Minute, I'm Zach Covert. You know, we've been having really warm temperatures, clear skies, but it's not quite the same in other parts of the United States. We're pretty lucky that we live in New Mexico. And Andrea is next with the weather.gov national forecast. Thanks, guys. So we're going to take a, go ahead and take a look at our national map. Actually, it's going to be really warm down in the south. We're seeing uh, temperatures of 89 in Brownsville and 85 in San Antonio. And up north is actually really chilly. It's, um, rain it's snowing in Minot and uh, Rapid City. And actually, we're going to talk about later how in the east coast, it's going to be uh, there will be experiencing some temperature changes in Boston and New York, but in our first story for the next, in our next map, we are actually um, going to be seeing some uh, uh, severe uh, thunderstorms in the um, Gulf Coast area from New Orleans to Birmingham. We're going to be experiencing some flash flooding, some damaging uh, winds, isolated storm, uh, tornadoes, and if you're traveling from east to west, on uh, I-10 or I-20, please take caution of those roads because it might be a little bit treacherous. So for our final map, uh, we are going to be looking at how there will be some cold uh, winds coming down to um, upstate New York and Pennsylvania areas. So if you're coming there for the east, uh, east, Easter weekend, 
it's going to be a little bit chilly, so we're going to see temperatures dropping down to the 30s, and we'll, uh, this area will be experiencing some uh, snow and even some rain. And that's all I have for uh, national weather. We're going to take a quick break, and we will come back to talk about um, local weather here in New Mexico. Morning Edition, weekdays from 5 to 9 on 90.7 FM and streaming live on krwg.org. Next on Sound Breaking. It's the birth of a new art form. Multi-tracking redefines music. The studio becomes an instrument. There was a whole other place where you could take rock and roll. Friday at 9 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Next time on A Chef's Life. These pears are better than they look. They are. <laughs> ah, spray, man. What are you doing? Spray them. That's not something you see every day. I gave it everything that I had. To have it here is really powerful. Oh, that's great. That's bigger than life. <laughs> I hope this is not a bad idea. Very expensive bad idea. Saturday morning at 10 on KRWG-TV. Welcome back. So let's look at some uh, local temperatures. So it's um, at Farmington, it's 74. At um, Albuquerque, it was 61. Clovis, uh, 60. Rideau, so 54. And in Roswell, it's been 68. And uh, Deming, 70. For tomorrow, Farmington is going to be at 66. Santa Fe, 61. Albuquerque, 70. Clovis, 70. Uh, Roswell at a... Uh, 75, Ridosa 65, and Deming is going to be actually at 79. And in El Gordo, we're going to be seeing some clear skies tonight with a low of 45 and the sunny skies tomorrow with a high of 78. And through the consequences, it, we're going to be seeing a low of 45 with uh, clear skies and tomorrow sunny with a high of 80. And in Silver City, it's going to be a low of 35 with clear skies and a high of 72 tomorrow. And here in Las Cruces, it's going to be a low of 45 degrees, clear, sky, uh, clear night skies, and tomorrow it's going to be nice and warm with an 80 degrees. And that's all I have for right now. Let's take it right back to the desk. Texas police are on the lookout for a suspect involved in an apartment complex shooting. That's the first story in tonight's Southwest Mini. Police in Plano are investigating a shooting at an apartment complex this morning. They say one person is dead and three others were injured. The suspect appears to have fled from the scene. Authorities believe the shooting was an isolated incident. At least five people from Washington State are dead after their vehicle plunged 100 feet over a cliff in Northern California. The adults in the crash were identified as 39-year-old Jennifer Hart, the driver, and 39-year-old Sarah Hart. Three of the couple's adopted children were ejected from the vehicle and died. Three others are still missing. Investigators are looking into what happened but say they don't believe drugs or alcohol played a role. And hundreds of Arizona teachers and their supporters rallied at the state capitol yesterday demanding for better pay. They wore red as part of the Red for Ed movement. It was launched by the grassroots group Organizers of Arizona Educators United. Arizona's governor is offering a 1% pay increase this year and another 1% next year. But the teachers want more. I'm Marlene Barraza with the Southwest Minute. I wonder how the NMSU baseball team is doing. I'm sure that Jackie can tell us more. She is next with sports. Thanks, Shelby. So far, so good. The guys are winning 2-0 against the team that they're playing at the moment here at home. And coming up also, I got an inside look at a unique Taekwondo class you don't want to miss out on. You can toss that remote because News 22 Sports is next. Next time on Sound Breaking. I knew that guy was the important guy to watch. He's the guy in charge. The producer. I've heard of Phil Spector. I heard of Jimmy Miller with the Stones. I didn't know what they did. A lot of the job is that of being a therapist. He's hearing things that the average ear will never encounter in a song. 
and it's your job to try and make everybody's hair stand on end. Friday at 8 p.m. on KRWG TV. Coming up on Austin City Limits. Mama, don't she even know? Oh, Mama, are you really gone? Did oh. you never heard a body bag of zipping over your best friend? So put your hands up. Your Saturday at 9 p.m. on KRWG TV. This is KRWG-TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back, sports fans. I'm Jackie Loretta, pitching you into your daily dose of sports news. Gold Medal Taekwondo isn't your typical Taekwondo school. It not only trains athletes for competitions, it combines different classes with Taekwondo mixed with self-defense and welcomes people of all ages. The owner, Marcy Schoberg, has been practicing Taekwondo for over 30 years. I got an inside look to see how she's helping her students defend themselves. Like, do you maybe have a school project to work Marcy on Schoberg now? was bullied as a kid. When she started Taekwondo, it became her safe place. She gained friends, confidence, and molded her into the instructor she is today. One of the first things she teaches is to yell the word no. Anybody that hears it happening is going to wonder what's going on and wonder if they need to get involved calling the police or helping in some way. So that's why no is such a good choice of what to yell. Marcy says nobody's too young to learn self-defense. We, we've had a couple stories of um, parents in class that the kids have ended up in a dangerous situation and they've, the parents have felt like the kids handled it very well because of what they had learned in class. Robert Whitmore says it's a relief his kids are learning how to defend themselves and taking these classes is a great way to keep them out of trouble. Most of the time they're, they're, uh, they're enthusiastic about them. They, they, they like being able to run and, and, um, and exercise more than they do at home. Um, they don't get out a lot and this gives them a chance to, to run and hit things for, and not break things. Marcy's passion for teaching self-defense has grown so much she's in the process of writing two self-defense books, one for young girls and the other for kids. I, I love the fact that um, teaching people that maybe are not already some kind of tough person that feels confident and feels able to hit and be brave and yell out loud. I, I love the way that I'm changing people. Marcy says the number one thing she wants her students to remember is to be aware of their surroundings. Moving on to Aggies, the New Mexico State baseball team is playing at home this weekend. Right now, the Aggies are taking on the Sacramento State Hornets. The score currently is 2-0. If you can't make it tonight, you can catch them again tomorrow at 6 and on Saturday at 11 a.m. The Aggies record sits at 15-10 overall and 2-1 and in conference play. It's rivalry in Las Cruces, this time in women's tennis. The Aggies will play a match against each of their two biggest rivals. First, they take on UTEP on Saturday at noon. Then on Sunday, the Aggies and Lobos come face to face, starting at 10 a.m. The Aggies haven't beaten the Lobos in women's tennis since April of 2012. High school basketball season is over in New Mexico, and even though the Las Cruces high school team boys lost in the semi-state finals, they still have something to be proud of. Forward RJ Brown was named the Class 6A First Team All-State. His teammate Marcus Collins was named Second Team All-State for 6A. And today is opening day for the 2018 Major League Baseball season. The season literally got started right off the bat. Cubs leadoff man Ian Hopp smashed a home run to the deep right field at Marlins Park on the very first pitch of the season. Later, Anthony Rizzo hit out one of his first homers of the season. The Cubs would beat the Marlins 8-4 to, to start off the season. And that's all I have for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action next week. Still ahead on News 22, Andrea will be back to look at your five-day forecast. But first, an Alamo Gordo welcomes their new Prince of Darkness. Find out more when News 22 returns. On the next 
KRWG Music Spotlight. So much for flowers filled the day on the border. Singer, songwriter, and guitarist Robin Hastings. Mom and guns don't care how brave a man. Saturday at 10 p.m. on KRWG TV. Next time on Antiques Roadshow, this is Betty. Betty loves this cabinet on stand. <laughs> Find out if the love lasts next time on Antiques Roadshow from Little Rock, Arkansas. Monday at 8 p.m. on KRWG TV. Let's take a look at our top stories. Diana Castillo took a part of the NMSU Police Department's active shooter training. The training was prompted by recent school shootings around the country. I was able to take you behind the scenes of this year's Sunland Park Derby. The Derby comes at the end of the winter horse racing season at the Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino. And Jackie Loera showed off her self-defense moves after visiting gold medal Taekwondo. The local martial arts school offers self-defense classes among other services. The Alamogordo Chamber of Commerce welcomed its newest member, the Prince of Darkness himself, Ozzy Osbourne. In February, the heavy metal icon, along with his children, made a stop in Alamogordo to film an episode of their A&E television show, Ozzy and Jack's World Detour. For the show's third season, Osbourne and his son Jack traveled to White Sands National Monument and decided to visit a ranch in Alamogordo owned by J.B. Oliver, the executive director of the Alamogordo Chamber of Commerce. During the Osborne stay, Oliver decided to ask if Ozzy would like to become a member of the city's Chamber of Commerce and was delighted when the rock star agreed. While in Alamogordo, it was rumored that the Osbournes also visited New Mexico Museum of Space Art. That's pretty amazing. I wonder if we'll get to go up to Alamogordo and see right. it for ourselves. That would be really <laughs> great, actually. So, Andrea, let's talk about our five-day forecast. Yes, so actually it's going to be really sunny for the rest of the week from Friday till Tuesday. We're going to be seeing really high temperatures in the 80s, so it's going to be really great to have not have a jacket around. And don't forget, you can catch all of today's aired stories and past newscasts on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash KRWG. This news brief in Espanol is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. Hola, ¿qué tal? Los saluda con gusto Adilene Archuleta en este breve informativo de Noticias 22. Lograron la captura de dos personas en relación con la pareja encontrada muerta a tiros en el en Garfield, Nuevo México. Los cuerpos de las víctimas Vanessa Rodríguez Mora, de 32 años, y Mario Cabral, de 34 años, fueron encontrados el domingo por la mañana por los agentes del Alguacil y un oficial de policía de Hatch en el 3200 de Carriage Hills. La policía de Las Cruces y la policía estatal de Nuevo México asistieron con la investigación que llevó a la captura de los sospechosos Luis Flores, de 29 años, y Cristal Cárdenas, de 30 quienes fueron arrestados en las cruces el miércoles por la tarde. Ambos individuos enfrentan cargos de asesinato y conspiración y solicitud criminal. Flores y Cárdenas están detenidos sin fianza en el centro de detención del condado de Doña Ana. El departamento de la policía de las cruces está buscando a los sospechosos de utilizar una tarjeta robada el pasado 26 de febrero. Las cámaras de seguridad captaron el momento en el que el hombre y una mujer utilizaron una tarjeta robada en la tienda Walmart ubicada en Walton Boulevard. El video de la pareja dejando la tienda puede ser visto en la página de Facebook del Departamento de Policía. Adilene Archuleta para Noticias 22. Local support for a portion of today's programming is provided by Wells Fargo. Our support of Aggie students goes beyond just banking. By supporting News 22, we're giving back to the community. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. <laughs> 